Welcome back to G-Body Media. Let's check out the top 10 most valuable GMG bodies. The most versatile core platform ever created. They utilize the old muscle core formula. Rear wheel drive, body on frame with a nice size engine bay. The G-Body platform was produced from 1978 to 1988 by General Motors. 1978 through 79 models are technically A bodies, but are accepted as G bodies as well. They came in two door coupes, four door sedans, station wagons, and even hatchbacks. Pontiac made the Le Mans and Grand Prix. Chevy made the Monte Carlo, Malibu, and El Camino. GMC made the Caballero. And Buick made the Regal. Let's see what's the top 10 most valuable G-Bodies in 2024. Number 10, we have the 1979 through 80 Oldsmobile Hearst Olds. The only G-Body to come standard with a 350 cubic inch 5.7 liter V8 backed by a three-speed automatic. Oldsmobile did make a 350 cubic inch diesel, but it was only an option on some models. And there was a limited number of 1984 Monte Carlo SSs that were shipped to Mexico that all had 350 cubic inch engines. RPO code for the Hearst Olds being W30, only available in two colors, Cameo White and Ebony Black, both having gold stripes. They were built on the Colors Calais platform. They came standard with a Hearst dual gate shifter that paid homage to the first 1968 Hearst Olds. Around 2,500 were produced in 79 and 886 were produced in 1980, with more than half being Canadian cars. They valued at around 9K in fair condition, 15K in good condition, and 19K in excellent condition. Concourse condition is literally the top 1%, which the average guy just won't have. Think of a classic car being bought new with the main purpose of preservation of an investment, being temperature controlled garage kept with regular maintenance and detailing. I'm not going to mention the Concourse price in the video, but it's going to be on the screen, guys. Number 9, we have the 1985-87 through 87 Oldsmobile 442, the last performance model Oldsmobile made. Guys that was around in the muscle car era swear that these are not true 442s, which I get it. They are essentially just a sticker package compared to the first and second generations. But Oldsmobile did give the 1985-87 through 87 442s a few goodies that set them apart from the run-of-the-mill Cutlass and other G-bodies. They came with a high output 307 cubic inch 5 liter V8 backed by a 4-speed automatic, an 8.5 inch rear end, and the beefier F41 suspension package. They were built on the Cutlass Align platform for the 85 and 86 model year and the Cutlass Supreme platform for the 87 model year. Around 3,000 were produced in 85, 4,273 in 86, and 4,208 and 87. They valued at around 10K in fair condition, 18K in good condition, and 29K in excellent condition. Number eight, we have arguably the most sought after G-Body, the 1983 through 88 Monte Carlo SS. They came standard with a high output 305 cubic inch five liter V8 backed by a three speed automatic, but they all got a four speed automatic in 85. L41 suspension package with rear deck lid spoiler, color options being black, maroon, silver, and white, and the rare is medium blue, which was only available the 83 and 84 model year. Only around 4,714 were made in the 83, with 84 through 87 ranging from 24,000 to 41,000, with a little over 16,000 being produced the last and final year, the 1988 when the G-Body platform was discontinued. They valued at around 13K in fair condition, 24K in good condition, and 33K in excellent condition. Number seven, 1983-84 Oldsmobile Hearst Olds. They were built on the Cutlass Calais platform, which was the top of the line before the Calais got its own name played and moved to the front wheel drive end platform. The salon took its place at the top trim level. The 83 and 84 Hearst Stoves only came in two colors, black with silver rocker panels for the 83 model year, with the paint scheme reversing the 84 model year to silver with black rocker panels. They had a high output 307 cubic inch 5 liter V8. 84 models got the stronger 8.5 rear end, only found on turbo Buicks and the 85 through 87 Oldsmobile 442s. No other G-bodies came stock with that rear end from factory. They also came with the most badass shifter found on G-bodies, 
or any other car platform, the Hearst Lightning Rods. Around 3,000 were produced in 83 and 3,500 in 84, which would be the last and final year for the Hearst Oaks. They valued at around 14K in fair condition, 23K in good condition, and 32K in excellent condition. Number 6, 1986 Chevy Monte Carlo SS Aero Coupe. Only 200 were built the 1986 model year, making them the lowest production model made on the G-Body platform. They came with a high output 305 cubic inch 5 liter V8, backed by a 4 speed automatic. Heavy duty L41 suspension package with a 373 rear gear ratio, with optional G80 Posi unit. Unfortunately, no Monte Carlo SS came with the 8.5 rear end, only the 7.5. The Aero Coupe was made exclusively for NASCAR, but Chevy had to make a certain number for the public to meet regulations and was to be sold in the heart of NASCAR country. 70 went to Charlotte, North Carolina, 30 went to Birmingham, Alabama, 70 went to Jacksonville, Florida, and 30 went to Atlanta, Georgia. All Aero Coupes came off the assembly line as regular Monte Carlo SS's and were sent to Cars and Concepts in Michigan for the transformation. Only major differences being the rear window, deck lid, and package tray. They all had white paint and burgundy interiors. They returned for the 1987 model year with three new colors to add to the already existing white. Silver metallic, black, and dark maroon metallic. 6,052 were produced in 87 and will be the last and final year for the Aero Coupe. They valued at 13K in fair condition, 25K in good condition, and 33K in excellent condition. Number five, we have the sleeper of all sleepers. This one is my dream G-Body. 1987 Buick Regal Limited Turbo T. You see, after the 86 model year, the T-Type became the Turbo T. The only warning you got at the stoplight before you knew you was in trouble was the power bulge hood and a few small decal badges. The top of the line luxury trim package married the top of the line performance package. It came with the infamous turbocharged 3.8 liter V6 backed by a 4 speed automatic. You see it had the drivetrain from the Grand National but not the interior. The 1987 Turbo T Limited could be ordered with any interior off the option list. The Grand National you could only get with the black and gray cloth bucket seats besides the first Grand National which came with the Lear Siegler interior. Only 1,035 were built in 87. They valued at around 19K in fair condition, 26K in good condition, and 37K in excellent condition. Number four, 1987 Buick Regal WE4 Turbo T. Basically the Grand National's lighter little brother, which technically makes the WE4 faster than the Grand National. No rear spoiler, aluminum bumper support, wheels and rear brake drums instead of the Grand National steel wheels and cast iron brake drums, but came with the turbocharged 3.8 liter V6 backed by a 4 speed automatic. Only 1,547 were produced making them considerably rarer than the Grand National. They valued at 19K in fair condition, 25K in good condition, and 37K in excellent condition. Number 3, 1984 through 86 Buick Regal T-Type WH1 Designer Series. They also came with the turbocharged 3.8 liter V6 with rear deck lid spoiler and a two-tone black and gray paint that paid homage to the first Grand National. Basically a Grand National with a different paint scheme and interior making it one badass sleeper. 1,163 were produced in 84, 525 in 85, and 463 in 86. They valued at around 19K in fair condition, 26K in good condition, and 39K in excellent condition. Number two, 1987 Buick Grand National. Named after the Winston Cup Grand National Series, it's arguably the most significant G-Body ever built. The first turbocharged Buick was the 1978 Regal Sport Coupe, which was carbureted and only made 170 horsepower. It paved the way for the fuel-injected, intercooled 3.8 liter V6 that's found in the 1987 Buick Grand National, which gave them more horsepower than the previous model years, making them the fastest production car produced in the late 80s. They only came in black with blacked out grille and trim with black and gray cloth bucket seats. 
They were underrated at 276 horsepower and 360 foot-pounds of torque. 20,740 were produced in 87, which would be the last and final year of the Grand National. But Buick wasn't going to let the Grand National go out without a bang. The 87 Grand National is valued around 26K in fair condition, 43K in good condition, and 66K in excellent condition. Number one, the most valuable G-Body ever produced. It was when it rolled off the showroom floor, and it still is today. 1987 Buick GNX, the last hoorah to end all Buick Grand Nationals. Only 547 were produced. They had a beefed-up four-speed automatic transmission, a bigger turbocharger and intercooler, a GNX Pacific Tune with a special-made rear end differential cover, that connects a special made pan hard bar to control the torque with a special number plaque on the dash letting you know you're looking at one of 547 most valuable G bodies ever created. They valued at 74K in fair condition, 107 in good condition, and 162 in excellent condition. Values will be different depending on what part of the country you are in, but the list should still be the same. Hope y'all enjoyed the 2024 Top 10 G-Bodies. Make sure y'all comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a good one.